Hello, and welcome in to Tater Talks, the podcast where Tater Talks gaming, content creation, sports, pop culture, current events, and whatever the hell we want. I'm your host, TaterBoy09, but most of you know me as Devin, well, depending on how that may be. For those of you who don't know this side of me, I'm a variety content creator who streams four times a week right here on Twitch, and also posts videos to YouTube, including this podcast, and highlight videos. Tonight's guest is an immersive Twitch streamer who also speedruns some of the Soulsborne games. In fact, he just opened up for GDQ, which is the biggest online speedrunning event online, in case you didn't know already. Please welcome in my friend, Birdo, please. Buddy, how are you doing Hi. today? Hello. Hi, I'm good. Doing good. Good to Hope hear. you as well. Yes. Uh, welcome in, everybody, from Birdo's stream. I recognize a lot of people's names. Um, Carl, Sonny, welcome in. I saw uh phoenix up earlier uh canny of course the usual suspects appreciate you all appreciate you guys hanging out coming in having a good time so i don't know what i, I normally screw up the beginning so we, we're already there <laughs> anyways uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah anyways ufo well, what's up buddy how you doing i i, I do want to say i appreciate the immersive comment because that's definitely one of the things i go for yeah for streaming overall <laughs> I, think, I don't know how I don't know how like noticed it goes, but I, I like doing that. I don't know. Well, in my opinion, an immersive streamer is somebody who likes to play games where, um, you know, you're trying to do as much as you can in a game, right? So you're trying to do as much finding, you know, if you're whether you're blind playing a game or you're playing a game for the three hundredth time, you want to try and do it as much as as you physically can in the game. In my opinion, that's uh, pretty immersive. But hey, um. Do you mean like collecting items and the kind of thing, or like exploring? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I, I just go by whatever I'm feeling. Like I don't know. I just play God of War. I, I can't say that game necessarily like made you want to explore too much, but you know that did mess around a lot. I guess. <laughs> did you have fun For with me, that game? Mostly, yeah. I had some some nitpicks, maybe some issues, but what um, are they? Oh well. Uh, that, that's, it's weird because I enjoy the combat like I, the thing I told people from day one once I started playing and realized how much fun I was having with the combat I was telling people I never realized how much I want to use the Stormbreaker for Marvel oh. <laughs> more than like after playing this game yeah. <laughs> it's so fun to like throw that thing around and just call it back and use it as a strategy yeah that's fair but, um, but the downfall is when it comes to the enemies like I don't like it, the combat's fun but the enemies in the, in the way you kind of implement it isn't the best in my opinion so i could see that yeah i was just yeah. curious because i, I was playing I, I played that game off stream i didn't play any of it on stream so mm -hmm. it was just me kratos and a, uh, a hammer or the the axe yeah. right yeah um, and just playing on stream but yeah i guess yeah so you know i had a great time with it i thought it was a great game i thought it was a great callback to the original three so i'm really glad that mm -hmm. you played the first three again before you jumped into the new one yeah, that's the only reason it took me so long to to get to it because I didn't want to play. Like I was a God of War fan before um, it came out, but um, for first of all, it was very expensive back then, and at the time, I don't think I was like as free. Like I don't had I didn't have as much payout from like Twitch to get it right away. Yeah, uh, but I did want to do all of them beforehand, and it just happened that like I think Ash told me it was like twenty bucks on Amazon. I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> steal! It was like the perfect time, perfect time. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm really glad that you did that, and uh, I really, uh, I, I did really like the new God of War game. I think they did a good job of modernizing it, um, but it, there did seem points where it was still kind of hack and slashy, where they're like, "Hey, let's kind of make it like a new age Dark Souls, but keep not quite that far." <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like, another thing I kind of kind of bothered me a little bit was just the amount of enemies to throw you at sometimes, like the waves, it just yeah. constant enemies coming like over and over, and like. You you killed last one, then it's another wave. It's like that that that's just, that's one of the only issues I had with like the original trilogy. Like they just kind of threw enemies at you endlessly without yeah knowing when they're gonna end. I didn't entirely like that. So right. yeah, that's nitpicky, I guess. I did enjoy like yeah. a lot of the boss fights and like the combat itself. I think maybe the ending was a little bit like gameplay wise was a little like uh, padded out maybe, but I did like it. Yeah, I, in my and opinion, then, it was worth the game of the year award. But you know. It, I'm just uh, 2018. I don't remember. Was there any other standouts? 
I can't think of any at the top of my head, to be honest with you. Well, oh, wait, I just remember Red Dead was, like, the big, like, and Game Awards, like, <laughs> like how it took, like, every single award, and then everyone was expecting it for the Game of the Year, and, like, nope, got a war. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. That's a good call. Back. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, I was surprised, like, an exclusive winning that Game of the Year, like, holy crap. Yeah, that like, was, man. It was good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Just want to give a quick shout out here to Viking in the chat for five months with the Prime sub. I appreciate that, and also Carl, thank you for this. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, the uh, so so let's talk about GDQ here first, right? Because that's kind of the 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 big thing that has happened recently. What's that? What? Yeah. What is GDQ? <laughs> let's let's let, well, let, actually, that's a good point. Let's talk about what GDQ really is because my kind of like half hazard, you know, uh explanation right at the beginning is not really one of the best right so uh. <laughs> so so let's talk about what gdq is right so it's an it's an online speed run event where people have to submit uh their runs to that and they have to be accepted and reviewed and all this big stuff like that um and, and it is one of the biggest it, it has to be the biggest online it, speed run it, event it is the biggest i don't know if awesome games on quick or summer games on quick is more popular i don't know oh but I'll, I'll feel it well, I don't know. They're both kind of like on a break time, right? Like like winter break or summer break. So yeah, who knows? I don't know. But yeah, def- as far as like the channel and like the event, Games Done Quick is top of the world. I'm pretty sure. Uh, ESA is up there, but not quite as much. Yeah, I think when you think online speedrun events, you think GDQ, which is Games Done Quick. I should say. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, honestly, I can't add much more. Uh, like, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not that like passionate about. Games done quick as a whole, like personally, it's just I did, you know, I saw the opportunity, I took it, kind of thing. But I mean, I am grateful they took me as well. It's just, yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't follow until like the day before my run, by the way. <laughs> the channel, <laughs> you didn't what? Follow the channel on oh, Twitch. Oh, nice. Well, hey, yeah, that's awkward. Huh? <laughs> you you can't be no. can't be perfect all the time, right? <laughs> well, it's just it's just like the chat, you know. You, you know, I'm sure you know about the stories. The chat isn't the greatest sometimes. Yeah. So. No, I got you. And I don't think you can even chat even if you follow. I think it has to be sub only. So. Yeah. They yeah. definitely had it in sub only this time. I don't know if that was something that they do uh, normally, but they definitely had it in sub only this time. I I think it started recently, like maybe a year ago. Yeah. I want to say. Honestly, that's yeah. for the better because there's going to be a bunch of trolls. You just, you don't need uh, it. Yep. 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 You don't I need do. it. But yeah, so let's talk about what that process is just from the very start, right? Because some people don't know that it, it's um something that you have to submit for and it's not something you can just sign up for and you're you're there right so talk talk me through what the submission process looks like and how you did your submission yeah um so that you probably mentioned beforehand the the event if we're talking awesome games on quick and summer games on quick normally there would be on site um so you do apply online i'm pretty sure but you are signing up for a physical event you fly to or whatever, unless right. you live there. Um, so, but as, as I'm sure most of you know, you know, that's not quite a thing that's going on these days, traveling. <laughs> so what is there? Actually, is there something going on right now? I, I don't know. Uh, just a, 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 a global pandemic. No big deal. Oh, um, oh, you missed it. <laughs> yeah. I must have um, missed that uh, memo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't leave anyway, like, what's the, you don't you don't notice these things. <laughs> I, don't leave, I don't leave my house now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, yeah, so the the only difference was that, like, oh, I mean, I think there might have been like rumors that they're gonna cancel it or something. I think I saw like on I don't know YouTube comments of people like, oh, I didn't know it's still happening or whatever. Um, but they did decide to open it for online submissions. So it's gonna be a purely online event this time, and well. Let me backtrack a little bit. I actually want to apply to ESA online because they, I think they were like before GDQ, um, as far as like whenever they do the main big event. But they require a face cam, and I don't even own a face cam, and I don't do face cam, so <laughs> I was like, nope, I'm good. Um, face cams for normies, anyways. Yeah, who would you use? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but um. Yeah, so after ESA, like, online happened, like, I was like, nah, I'm good. But I think they opened, like, a smaller GDQ event uh, right after ESA online. Uh, and I played to that, but I didn't get in at the time. Uh, I think that was in 
May, April, uh, April, May, maybe. I think a lot of they the, had like a small. Yeah, a lot of the months are just starting to blend together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, it's 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 a little bit smaller. Like it wasn't the actual game sound quick, obviously. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think I applied to that, and I got rejected. I'm pretty sure. I didn't see myself. Um, I think I think Kata Catalyst from Dark Souls Speed Souls community. Uh, oh yeah. Got in. Yeah, but uh, I didn't. So, oh well. Um, then I played a decent speedies. Yay! Speedies. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I forgot. Right. So I was actually like, I thought I was going to be the only online event I did this year, but here we go. Here we are. Yeah, that event we had, uh, we had uh, actually had Warwick on the podcast. It was one of the, one of the first oh, yeah, episodes, yeah. and that's what we were talking about. It was that online speed run event that uh, I was a part of as part of staff, but then also Berta was a runner. So mm-hmm. the one called Decent Speedies. It was, it was that was a great yeah. time. That was that was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was fun. I actually enjoyed it. Um, it was, it was a little bit different than uh, what I've done before that because the only event I've done prior to that was uh, the Speed Souls Charity Marathon. But oh, sure. the only two things I did on there were races, and races are by far more chill. Like you, you just kind of like banter with your, you know, your other right racer. So you didn't have to explain anything. And Decent Speedies kind of wanted you to like be able to explain your run. Right. Um, and I think I think solo was kind of the idea, right? I don't think there's any like co-commentating going on. Yeah, I mean, you could right? you could have had a couch for that if you if you wanted, but I mean, it's yeah. it's not uh, yeah. like, to the grand scale of what GDQ was, so you know, you are kind of expected to have a, a someone to commentate with you when you're running yeah. in GDQ. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and, I, and like for me it seemed like people like in these speeds they wanted you to do solo. So, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll I'll do it. Like I'll just do solo. Yeah. And it went all right. Like I think I had to commentate it was fine. Uh, and because I wasn't like too focused on, because like the 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 thing the model for decent speed is like you don't have to be the best at your run, so I wasn't too worried about how good I did the run. So because of that, I was able to like you know relax a little bit more on this on the tech and skill and right. talk a little bit more freely. You just have to be decent, right in the name. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that those are the only that's the only of a line event I thought I was gonna make it to, but then they opened up. Uh, Games done quick submissions. A lot of thing alongside ESA, but I don't think yeah. Oh no, it did happen before that. Yeah, but again, online uh, face cam. So I was like, mm, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I I saw the submissions were open. Uh, the things that had changed from the last time I played games done quick was that emulator was now allowed allowed in Demon Souls speedrunning for the leaderboard. Um, which gave me a little bit more freedom to like, you know, do more runs, similar runs, uh, even a few variations to the set runs already. Right. And that, and currently, I technically have a world record in that in one of those. Um, not that it's faster than like the actual console record that's already established, but I do technically have one, I guess. So maybe that would help a little bit. Um, hey, you just heard kinda... it here first, chat. We have a world record holder right here on the podcast. <laughs> Very first yeah. time ever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I not, not only do I have that, but also a few more runs here and there, you know, like I, I think at the time I applied to the first GDQ run or whatever was at like three records or three times. And now I have like s- four or five or six, I think. Nice. Um, so yeah, just a little bit more variety, I guess, in my resume. Right. But, um, the submissions opened three days after the Demon Souls remake was announced. <laughs> so part of my application was like as of two days ago Demon Souls remake was just announced and it is Demon Souls is finally at the forefront of like the Souls community or just gaming yeah. community because like Demon Souls is one of those games I never really got the spotlight I really needed or got or you know deserved um, and it got overshadowed by Dark Souls so it never really right. got that attention so I was like you know what this is a good time to uh to feature it, I guess, back in GDQ, because I hadn't had a run since 2016, uh, I believe, for Demon's Souls. Yeah. So, yeah, I typed that in. I just said, like, I don't know, like, remake. I have a few more times on Demon's Souls. Uh, I mean, I have a screenshot somewhere if you really want to look, but, like, yeah, like, that's basically... We don't, we don't need just, to go uh, on the specifics, you know, but but still, just bringing that to that point is, is a great ideology, right? So... I know that for just for example purposes, I know that when did you and I should ask this. So I know that we, when you were going in for decent speedies, you created your own, um, you know, commentary video, your your own submission video, right? Yeah. 
Was that the same one that you used for GDQ, or did you tweak it up a little bit? No, I, uh, they don't really need you to submit that, um, like a specific submission. So I just put in my PB, I think, my fastest I got you. console time. I, and I was just going to say, in part to that, was that I know that when we were running through the Decent Speedies ones, one of the the best submission videos we got was yours. So <laughs> just pointing that out compared to, you know, the way that, so not, not only on top with how good like your submission video was for that, and maybe it, it had to be at least decent for decent, it had to be decent for, <laughs> for GDQ, right? So bringing those two points up, plus the um, Demon Souls being announced, the remake, the remaster being amount, announced, was like the perfect storm for you to get to be in GDQ, which is honestly and uh, you might be kind of underselling it a little bit that's kind of a really big deal like it really is a big deal that that you're able to not only do that like be accepted in there then you were also the opener of it right oh my god you started out the whole event you and and ashwin your uh your commentator at uh then did a great job too by the way yeah thank you an awesome job um yeah um so yeah, like they don't really cross us anything like that. But yeah, like I, I, I did appreciate that you told me that. I think you DM me like I think after I got accepted. I think oh. you even told me like, dude, I've been wanting to tell you this for like days, but like your yeah. submission was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. Like I definitely think like, I mean I don't know. Like I definitely appreciate the art of understanding what the hell is going on in your speeder. Yeah, <laughs> like, I would say really. like. Because like especially Demon Souls, it's not even that hard. Like uh, Demon Souls isn't too technical at all. Like compared to even the other Souls games. So it's not too hard to, like, explain what's going on, but there is still, like, finesse and little details that you need to be aware of. But, like, that's what happens when you run it for, like, a year and a half. <laughs> you start to get used to all the, the little things, know how, to, know how to explain it. Yeah, you're not wrong. And it's always good to have, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a casual viewer of GDQ. So I'll, I'll watch just whatever runs, basically, running at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, sometimes you... Like, you know, you'll do some, like, fancy out-of-bounds trick or something like that where you'll get warped to the end of the end of the level or something crazy like that, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, you know, if you're just watching somebody stream and they're doing that, they've done that for so long, they it's just repetitive motions or something like that. It's still good to have that as just a casual viewer of GDQ, if you got accepted into that, to at least explain it a little bit, right? Like, you know, yeah. here we're going to do a backslash back jump and that's going to warp us to the end of the level. Boom, and we're on the next part. You know, just yeah. just for example purposes, right? Yeah, yeah. Ash and I definitely like talked a lot about like what to include and what to include because yeah. there's a lot of little things I could have, but we caught out or things that we added in later. Uh, oops, my monitor just went out. Um, oh. uh, but yeah, so um, I was gonna say, oh yeah. Um, so as far as the submission, like what you're saying, like it was a perfect storm, but like, I mean. I'm, like I can be humble, but I mean, I, I mean, come on. I mean, right. I've been like I think fourth place is like the highest half for the console, which is not bad. Yeah, uh, I think I'm only like, uh, like what, like two and change minutes away from Eki on the fastest time. So like, yeah, like it, it is a combination of all things. Like perfect timing because it was post emulator uh, availability for leaderboard and then uh, after the remake, like it was a very good timing yeah. for me to submit. But I mean, yeah, like I. I I am pretty solid at the speedrun, I would say. And I think I'm on the I'm, I'm the only, like, current runner that's, like, that high in the leaderboard. Um, and that so. was part of that perfect story. I was not trying to sell you short in any sort of way. Yeah, I yeah, just want to point that out. I, I've seen how long how you've been... How dare you? <laughs> yeah, how dare I? <laughs> I've seen how long you've been grinding this, grinding that game. And it is, it, it's honestly impressive that you can still grind it. I guess um, it is still, it's a Friday game. You, know, you stream it on Fridays. And mm-hmm. that's that's like your day to run, right? So that you're yeah. still playing other games and your other you know other things are included with that. But still, would you say a year and a half you've been stream just grinding that speed run? Uh, I started in December 2018. That's that's more than a year and a half. <laughs> just want to say that. Yeah, almost two years. Yeah, roughly. Um, I mean, I haven't like run it the whole time. Like I think when Secure came out, it took a little break, um, and then once I got my 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 current console PB. I took another break for Dark Souls One, but for many reasons, I ended up coming back to Demon Souls again. Right. <laughs> I can't escape. Um, but yeah, you um, kind of have a see. first love, right? 
you kind of have a first love of the speed <laughs> run you get. The first one is up. No, um, yeah, let me see. Is there anything else? Uh, well, yeah, I applied. Um, I think it was around a month. I think it was like 27 days or something. I had to wait. Um, uh, I like I was waiting all day anxiously like to see what the results were. And I think like shortly after I brought it up to the community, to I think Ash's community, I was like, they haven't sent me out of sky Joe yet. Like I, I went to like get ready for bed. <laughs> and then I think Rego posted like, Hey, you made it. And I was like, Oh what? <laughs> so so yeah, I was I, I was, you know, hyped. I was excited. I even told my, my mom and my siblings about it, which I never tell about these things, but yeah. Um just totally you know, elation. I, I, yeah, I, I told my mom what the event was. Like, I was like, you know, this is the biggest event. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I think, I think, like, I want to say 30 minutes later, we go told me again, like, dude, you're first. And I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> like, I, what? I was so, I didn't know how to feel. The like, very first runner of the entire thing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did not know how to feel. I was just like, yeah, I got in, but now I'm starting the whole <laughs> Like, holy crap, dude. Yeah. That was, that was a night. I could not sleep for like a solid two or three hours off it. <laughs> oh, I bet, dude. I bet. That, it's just like, so even if you go, so like, for example, you know, when we were doing the Decent Speeds I ran the first time, even with that kind of event, I was still shaking the first time that I did it, right? Mm-hmm. So I can't even imagine having to go into just the very first of this huge event and pull out not only just, you know, being the very first, but also doing a great job of doing it. So yeah. it's just multiple things that just were absolutely amazing about the run and, you know, being accepted and everything, yeah. everything great about it. It it reminded me of back in like high school, whenever like you had to pick a presentation, you had to be like, you know, you had to pick your spot or whatever. <laughs> it kind of reminded me when you had to be first up to a presentation or something, right. which I think the way we justified it back in like high school and college was like, hey, if we're first, we set the standard, and then after that, like we can't be judged for something better than us or something worse. We set the standard. Um, the only reason that didn't quite work for me mentally is uh, like the ones are different. Like it's not quite comparable. Usually those presentations are like the same for the whole class. Right. So like it wasn't quite the same, but yeah, that's kind of what it reminded me of. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I'm first on the presentation. Yeah. Plus you can do it first, and then you could just be done with it, right? Yeah, dude, I, I totally chill like the rest of the day. Yeah. I was just singing out with Ash, chilling, watching. We, we actually watched the run back to see how it, how it went or how it seemed, seemed. Did you watch it back when when you were streaming? Like, did you watch it with your, your oh. chat? Oh no no. Uh, my setup was like my uh, one entire monitor was the console of the game because I had to switch my monitor to like the the PlayStation, and then the other one I think was OBS. Mm. Just so I can keep an eye on my mic or whatever, and that's it. <laughs> like I couldn't see anything else. The chat, like even though I would have loved to see the chat, like I, I don't want to catch anything that might have uh, upset me while doing the run or anything. So and I think that's the same thing. We both just kind of focus on the run. So yeah, it makes sense. Were you actually streaming when you were running, or was it you? Because were... I I thought I heard that they were gonna be restreaming it through like Discord or something like that. Uh, not quite. Um. They they originally gave us a like specific server, which I think was GDQ specific, that we were going to stream to. Oh. But they made a lot of changes, like in, like very last minute. It was it was kind of, it's kind of a mess in the backside. Like I can go into that a little bit later. But yeah, uh, they gave us a server to stream to. But then like before the event, like you know, a couple minutes before, whenever they were having issues, like they gave us a Twitch channel that we we're going to stream to. So we did that instead, which it wasn't mine. It was just a random one. Um, but yeah, so we, we streamed to a random channel, uh, Ash had a, about six to seven second delay, uh, on, on her feed to me, oh. my run. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I can go to that a little bit more as well, but yeah. So, uh, this discord live thing, uh, it wasn't for the actual stream. It was for the commentators. So we're gonna, we're intending to do that. So our commentators and our hosts even could like see the game, um, as, as quickly as possible because discord live is pretty pretty instant so, yeah yeah discord is not... discord's actually really great i think that like companies should start looking into using discord for like you know they have like their zoom meetings and stuff like that they should really look into discord mm. yeah dude like sometimes 
Well, I'm at work. I'm like, dude, I wish I was just in the Discord server doing all these things. Right. <laughs> like, like my, on my first like training meeting that I had with people, we had to actually call a number, and it was like a group call. But like people were muted sometimes. I had to tell them to mute. We didn't know who was talking. It's like, dude, just use Discord. Like, honestly, I kind of wanted like, I oh, I actually might have given that feedback or something. I think I might have. I think oh, I think I might have said like, maybe for team meetings, have a specific like voice call like thing. Yeah. I think I was tempted to say Discord. But I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> hey yeah. man, technology's changing as fast as it can, and I think Discord should really get into the game. Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah. Next? So, anyways, back to talking about you know, kind of the back end of Discord or back end of uh, of Discord of Discord. Yeah, the back end of Discord. Yes, of GDQ. Right. So, um, so you they were having you stream to like an actual uh, a Twitch channel that was like mm-hmm. a random Twitch channel, yeah. but like, and then they just kind of like restream that. Is that right? Yes. Something like that, I think. Yeah, <laughs> sounds way think... overly complicated. But hey, what do I it, know? I'm not running the event, it, right? <laughs> it it doesn't sound safe to me because, like, I don't know. I feel like people, if they found the channel, could like attack. It. I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like the best idea, but I don't know. I don't know why they switched it from the other one because I think they told Ash that she was gonna have like a very a low delay because she was gonna have a specific like server to look at the stream or something. Yeah. But not even that. I think she just got like channel or something i don't know yeah without the so, low yeah. latency so she's actually watching on like a 10 yeah. second delay <laughs> yeah okay so as far as back end so here's where the mess starts uh and my first few complaints come in for the event we haven't so, even got we haven't even gotten to the messy part and we're already just talking about some of the bad stuff but yeah anyways go ahead <laughs> yeah so uh it's 11 a.m central time that's when the stream is supposed to start um um or no no was it 10 30 i think it was 10 30 when it starts and then 11 was when we were not run started yeah, yeah something like that um that didn't happen it, the technical issues i don't really know what was going on i don't think they really knew like even the host and like some of the people in, in the back end were just clueless which i think is the biggest issue when it comes to events like this because i actually have a lot of complaints about esa hosting because she was reading donations for that mm-hmm. she was saying that there was a lot of like little back end issues and people there's not a lot of communication that was the issue i think right yeah so something similar is happening for us uh, our host and, and ash and me and some tech people are just like clueless um we, we were like in a, in a weight room in a like a green room i think it was called yeah and that's where uh we were getting ready they had a specific discord channel voice channel for like going live so once we're actually like we're about to go live um we you know they gave us a countdown and then they said we're live. But we were under the impression that we're going to get moved channels. So we all stayed quiet for like a solid 15 seconds. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Like <laughs> you might, I think it was actually part of the stream too. Like we're just there like for a little while. Um, say nothing. But the one guy who was actually in the voice call told us, you guys are live. Uh, you couldn't hear him because he was like, he wasn't part of the stream. He was just in the voice call. Right. Um, and then, yeah, that's when the run started. But it was very like... I don't know, I felt messy start. It, like, after it got started, it was fine uh, for the rest of the run. But, yeah, that first part was very messy. Um, yeah, I definitely felt as they got, as the event went on, they started getting a little bit cleaner and cleaner. But, yeah, I remember we were we turned on the TV, and we were, I was like, oh, GDQ's about to start. And I was like, I think Birdo's first. So we turned it on, we watched it, you know, got everything loaded up and stuff like that. And it was, you know, 11 o'clock, and I was like, what are we doing? And then it was like uh, uh, almost eleven thirty, and we're like, okay, I guess yeah. this will start eventually. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they skipped a lot of the pre-show to get us started, which um, you know, fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was at least hoping they had a little bit, not just literally us the first thing. Like that would have been terrifying, but <laughs> or I don't know, maybe not. But um, but yeah. So as far as like that, like yeah, we were definitely very delayed. Um. But after that, it, it, it went pretty smooth, I want to say, for the entire run. Um, as far as, like, any hiccups or anything, I don't think it was any. The only thing, like I was saying a bit ago, uh, was that Ash had a six or seven second delay on her feed of my gameplay. Yeah. It's hard to so, commentate um, with that. 
Yep. She told me afterwards. I didn't know this until after the run. Like after we kind of hang out to discuss that. Like she told me, dude. I was like six seconds behind. I was like, what? And she she told me like, dude, I was so thankful that you gave me these little cues. Okay. Well, actually, let me backtrack. Um, we practiced a lot before the event. Like I didn't do like a week and a half. Uh, before we yeah. started kind of like like doing like practice runs kind of practicing our commentary like you know kink, like you know just fleshing out little kinks seeing what we want and what don't want to run right um so she i'm sure she got used to like my rhythm and how i talk and stuff like that to a more in-depth degree than i that she would already um so she she was very thankful whenever i was like and now coming up is a spider skip or something because like she she knows i'm i'm there or i'm ready to pass it on to her yeah um so yeah she for those kinds of things she was very thankful um she's so smart dude like she she if she she knew something was going wrong in the run if i'm like <gasps> or something like if i in the air she knew something happened so she would be like <laughs> if she was talking she like big quiet she went quiet for a little bit she, oh my god, dude, she picked up some little things that, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I would have, that's for sure. That's right. And, that's like, right. yeah. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, like, sometimes she would wait and see what actually happened, because I wouldn't actually say what happened, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, six second delay. She did pretty solid, considering that. Uh, I think there's very few p moments where you could have maybe known that she was a bit, like, behind. Yeah, um, I'll tell you as a viewer, um, I, as far as I remember, I don't remember noticing it at all. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Because it seemed like you guys, it definitely seemed like you guys were practicing a lot. That you could definitely yeah. tell. You were definitely prepared. So that's definitely a plus, especially when it comes to yeah. not knowing things like that. You're kind of put in a <laughs> bad spot, essentially. So yeah. it's definitely good that you guys were able to practice, get some time in, but then also practice enough to the point where you guys are knowing each other's like quirks to where, you know, she's picking mm -hmm. up when you're not necessarily, when you're like, when you, you know, picking not, up what I'm putting down. Right. Not necessarily messes something up, but you know, you're sitting there and it's like, uh, you're like, Oh, and I'm like, Oh, must, yeah. something must have happened. Yeah. But I know but where we're at. Was... So yeah. exactly. Yeah. The other thing that was funny to me, like thinking back <laughs> was that like, she, she, I'll sometimes like, like I would do the, the like a skip light, and I'll be like, nice. And she would be like, good job, but she hadn't seen me do it yet. <laughs> so like, I didn't realize that until like after watching it a few times. Back, I was like, wait, you don't know what's happening. <laughs> That's what we call planning on your feet, and she did a great job. Yeah. Uh, another funny thing about a delay, which is a lot less uh, severe and very, very like hard to notice was that her audio for like her mic was actually ahead of mine technically the only reason she actually like didn't like take over my audio was because we both had like a second delay and i, to I actually told her like a few minutes before stream like hey maybe add like a minute delay or a minute a second delay to your um to your microphone because i have a second delay on my gameplay because my cash card is a second delay yeah so I think only second, like minutes before this, the run, I was like, dude, maybe you should add one to yourself so you can like be offset as well, just like me. And only because we did that, like very, like like 15 minutes before the run, only because we did that was her audio not ahead of me. It was crazy. Nice. That was smart on your part too. Smart to, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have known. Like, the, the like, um, I was going to say, like, she... Like there was like after I stopped talking and I passed it on to her, she always left me like a second or two to like yeah. you know like say anything I needed to get out of the way. But if, if I didn't say anything, she'll pick up from there. But like if you actually watch the run back, like, like you can hear like I I stopped talking, she immediately picks it up like almost too fast, which is you know maybe you could argue that's also it could be a practice. But like yeah, it wasn't intentional. I was just the audio was like her audio feed was going to the, to their servers a lot faster than my gameplay. I imagine because there is gameplay like a lot more video. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So, but, have you seen that clip that people like, uh, the Bye Bye one, by any chance? I haven't. I don't, is it from GDQ? I don't I don't think I've seen that one yet. Yeah, uh, it was a clip from the, the run. Um, it was that moment where, uh, where the gargoyle, like, I was just saying, like, this gargoyle falls if you stand in this corner. And we won't, it, we both went bye bye. And, like, that actually wasn't synced on our end. I think, like, it obviously would have been her delayed a little bit. Yeah. But, it, but like the way it turned out on the stream, it was like very perfectly synced. So people were just like, "Oh, that was cute." <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so fun. 
I'll, you'll have to send me that so like i can set it out and everything but that yeah, okay. that's actually hilarious especially yeah. knowing it now right you know knowing the the kind of backstory behind it that's actually really funny yeah like i, I was t- like oh i kind of stopped telling people i was like you know what? it's whatever it's it's the moment it's just they just have the magic of the moment so uh right so you know i don't tell people anymore but at first i was like yeah so uh the second this thing had a delay and we weren't actually uh synced perfectly like that all right, so. we'll we'll watch that after we're done with the podcast here. I got it bookmarked. Okay. Don't you worry. All right. All right, cool. Um, let me see what else. What else? What else? Do you remember what the total end amount was? It was close to like almost three million, wasn't it? Oh, for the nations, uh, I think we went over two. I don't remember it was three or not. I don't recall. Yeah, I think it was like two point three or something like that million which it was all going towards the uh, covid relief wasn't it no no not this time i think the i think the first event they did was for that um oh I see. since you know it was a recent i think this is just uh i don't know uh, oh this one was doctors without stuff. borders is what it was yeah, yeah so that yeah, okay yeah. that makes some more sense which is kind of tied into the covid because you know they're yeah, working. Oh, okay. But it still does. It, it Doctors Without Borders is from what I picked up at least was you know these and they had one great interview on. I can't remember her name or anything. I can't cite my source or anything like that. But she had a great <laughs> interview where she's talking about how she was her and like ten people, ten doctors were in this rural part of some African country. And they were like, yeah, hey, don't go out after night because or, or no, it was the it was the other way around. They were able to like like all of the townspeople were really protective of them because they were trying to help everybody. But then there was some mm-hmm. group that was not OK with that. Some, you know, like mafia or something like that that was trying to. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't it wasn't that extreme, but it was, you know, somebody that they were trying to not. They they were they were basically trying to protect the doctors the like the local people were because they were the only people that were really helping them. It was actually mm. a magnificent story. I should actually find that clip and uh, mm. post it out because it, it was actually really interesting to hear. And not only was it just from someone who heard that story, it was someone who actually lived that, and they mm. were the person that you know they were had to take planes to leave because they were going to be in danger. But they did not leave until there was the very last second. And then they could all, they could they couldn't take any other stuff with them. They just had to leave because the plane wasn't going to make it if it didn't go. They didn't take anything. Man. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I guess that they would cover COVID as well. But yeah, doctors is like their usual. I think for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great event. It's a great event. They always get in the millions for sure. And I think mm-hmm. that the last live one did reach over three million. So they probably didn't get as maybe maybe they got maybe they didn't expect any anything more after you know people in a pandemic time and maybe not willing to give as much because maybe people lost their jobs or something like that but they still made it over over two million which is I mean insane. you could argue maybe some people didn't have to pay for airplane this time or hotel <laughs> that's exactly right instead of donating instead of uh, having to pay for all that they just decided to donate instead that's a great argument that's a great argument yeah. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of things. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, the the run itself was very clean. I only died twice. Uh, one death was a little bit time consuming. The other one wasn't as bad as I thought. I just, I just thought, oh, second death this is going to be a bad run. Like it's going to be a fifty-five, fifty-six. Yeah. Get close to the estimate. But no, it turned out to be fifty-one something, forty something. I don't know. <laughs> fifty-one yeah. something, and my estimate was an hour exactly. So pretty good yeah it's better to overshoot those just in case right yeah yeah like i i i I thought a good run uh rta for my for the any percent was like 50 minutes i've gotten down to like 47 i think that was my fastest but like 51 with two deaths like that kind of surprised me like i was just like what (laughs) it it was super good did you have to change up any kind of strategies because you were running on RTA or real time as opposed to like in game time? Or how does how does uh, Demon Souls like choose their final timing with that? Um, it's more or less the same as all Souls games. Like you, um, load screens don't count. Um, like the mania doesn't count for time. Like it, it's it's similar to most of them. Um, as far as changing strategies, not many. Um, 
I, I would have been willing to do some IGT strats if I was an emulator, but because I was on console, the little slow screens could be pretty long. Mm. So very, very minimal things that changed. But yeah, there's a few things that definitely did to adjust. Um, a lot more safety strats, obviously, in case yeah. I needed them. Hashtag marathon um, things. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not too many things. Not, not, not any that stand out to me. The only thing I would say maybe is like, being low safe on bosses, like some of them or some areas, like I was at full health instead of a clever rat ring range, was it which is hyper mode, right? More damage when you have low <laughs> HP, yeah, yeah. So that's the only thing I could say, really. Like, there's a few things, but that's good. That That's how you know it's it's a a, a, a good run, is or just like a, a good speed run game in general, in my opinion. Like, for example, mm-hmm. I, I am running our Resident Evil 3 remake right now, and there's like specific parts where you don't finish a cutscene because it stops the in-game time and you're able to like cover ground but then there's also situations where it's like you it's a mess right and <laughs> the guy the guy who it, the uh, resident evil 3 remake was an incentive game at this most recent gdq and he it did actually get met but he had to adjust his route essentially because if you're running on rta or you know real time you have to you can't have those situations where you're sitting there talking on the phone or whatever to stop the yeah. time, but still need to be contributing to it. So it's kind of, mm-hmm. I was just curious to see if there's anything like that in your run that yeah. you, know, you had to switch. Over nothing, for. nothing too major. Like in, in, in the other souls games, like dark souls, um, opening doors, usually you read out there, uh, because you know, it, it cuts out the opening door animation. You're back in the main menu. You can save those couple of seconds. Uh, and Demon souls, you don't really do that anyway so like you know there was like one door reload but it wasn't the only reason like there was a few other reasons why yeah um yeah not really uh, i would say it's it was mostly the same just maybe be a little safer i guess yeah um, got, gotta be careful of them save strats because they might be slower but hey you're not going for speed in a marathon you're just trying to be it might i feel like sometimes you're just trying to finish the run just to make sure it's there <laughs> oh yeah yeah um there's there's so many little aspects. I was like, do I want to risk it? Nah, I'm not. <laughs> like I could, but like I won't risk things unless I'm like really close to the estimate or something. You got the devil and the angel on your shoulder trying to have a yeah, conversation. Like, literally. like I need to think straight right now. Okay, I need to yeah, think straight. The, the, the devil is Birdo and Ash is the angel because she was so like <laughs> she convinced me not fighting uh, the last boss and clever if, if I'm close to the estimate. Like yeah. I was going to, but she was like. Ah. <laughs> there is that boss at the end um i don't remember his name the or their name the tough one the rng one but you got a really good boss fight for that didn't you yeah i call him false king alant he's a old king alant uh, i i chose i choose that name for a lot of reasons but yeah um he is the worst i hate him <laughs> so yeah i find him and I fought him at full health, and yeah, he was kind of he was kind of nice actually. Um, I would have liked a little more tension just for you know the the, the sake of the <laughs> of tension of the, for the chat to be like monk ass, but yeah, build nah. the suspense. Yeah, yeah, and um, it it doesn't well it helps that he's at least the last they're one of the last boss fights in the game, right? <laughs> I, sometimes I wish we let it sooner so we can get that out of the way, but yeah, <laughs> as far as tension, yeah, sure. Right. Sure, I'll give it to you. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah. So the run is good. Uh, as far as like ending things, like uh, yeah, we made our outros, and then once we got out of the the, the life thing, no one told us we weren't out. We were out of life. Uh, live stream. We just kind of waited there. No one told us that we were fine to leave. So eventually, we just kind of dipped the call. Yeah. <laughs> we were both like awkwardly waiting there. <laughs> Yikes, dude! Yikes! Yeah. <clears throat> It That's... was the back end wasn't too good. Yeah. So, but... like I said, at least from my note, from what I noticed as for just like a casual viewer, it probably wasn't. It, it seemed like it was. Well, I guess other than the beginning, right? Because they took like literally twenty to a half hour, twenty minutes to a half hour mm-hmm. to actually get started with the show at eleven o'clock, yeah. like they said they were going to. Yeah, and but... then the actual like run beginning, it took like a. 10 15 seconds first. Yeah. Be like, oh, we're live. Oh, it's like, all but, right, let's, yeah, but let's get it going here. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm happy that, like, the end result, like, the actual live stream and the VOD were good. Like, I think the YouTube videos already had 100,000 views. I'm happy about that. Dang, I wanted to take over. The, I wanted to take over the 2016 Demon's Souls run. 
<laughs> What's the 2016 one at? Uh, 600. So we're almost there. <laughs> 600,000 <laughs> views? 600,000 yeah. views? Oh, Jesus. And then 100 for mine. So give it a few months. Give it a, maybe a year or two. Oh, it'll get there. It'll get there. Me. Especially, I, I bet it'll build a lot of hype once that uh, comes through, too. Here, there's the video, everybody. Watch it. Mm, the remake, yeah. Um, yeah, once the, I think I saw people commenting on, like, the 2016 run. Um, like, oh, the Doom Souls movie just got announced. I'm not watching this. So imagine that, but, like, with my run. <laughs> That's what's about to come up. 126,000. I think we can get you up to at least 126,000 and, like, 700. So <laughs> I, I, I would like to contribute that personally to me and, you know, the, the chat. Here, so. <laughs> Refresh the page, like, 20 times per person. <laughs> Let's get on it, boys and girls. Let's do it. Come on. Uh, we just want to shout out here real quick also, Hunter, uh, if you're still here. Thanks for contributing to the cooking stream challenge. Um, and also, earlier, Phoenix, uh, you gifted a sub to Mrs. X Gene. Yeah, I saw that. Hi, man. I hope you're still here. I hope you know, I, I, I hope you're having having a good time. You know, I, it's yeah, been, hope you're doing well. Yeah, it's been a while since I've also spoke to you. So, yeah, there you go. I'm on it. Nice. Carl's got it. So that yeah. is OG right there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You said something at the beginning of the stream that I thought was really interesting. Um, how do I phrase this? Is when you were first talking about Demon Souls, right? Just in general, you said it kind of gets overshadowed by the Dark Souls, Dark Souls Remaster is basically what it is, right? So it's always yeah, everybody's shooting for that one. Um, do you think that? With the re, is it a remake or a remaster for the Demon remake. Souls? Remake. Remake. Okay. So, do you think with the remake of Demon Souls, do you think that's going to bring it to the forefront as big as Dark Souls Remastered currently is, or do you think it's going to be too much like the original game where it's it's like Demon Souls isn't necessarily a bad game, right? But it's one that they hadn't quite figured out exactly what they wanted to do yet. <laughs> So, what, what what's your what what is your what is your take on how the new Demon Souls is going to run? And I don't really know much about it, so maybe you can educate us a little bit too about yeah where well, they're at with it. The funny thing, the funny thing is that you say that uh, about um how you had they hadn't figured it out yet. I feel like well, there's two thing, two aspects to that. Like first of all, a little fun fact about like the development of it. Sony considered, like, they t the ship told for himself, like, this game was a failure before it even came out. Like, before it was done, like, for Sony, it's just like, this is not going to fly. It's just, whatever. But they still, like, put it out, so. But, like, because Sony kind of dictated it as a failure, for himself was more willing to experiment with it and go crazy and, like, try these new things. So, it kind of ended up working out really well uh, for them. Like, they was just able to do these crazy ideas. Like, dude, if you die in Demon Souls, your HP, like, gets cut in half like who does that what game does that <laughs> you know it's once you die in human body them. yeah the ones you die in human form um the game gets harder instead of easier uh because you're corrupting the world or something like no dev will do that back in the day like like this is, this is we're talking about like days like 2009 2000 yeah yeah like this is a time when like you know we wasn't that long ago like you know games are starting to become softer yeah, too soft. <laughs> Maybe that's a bold statement, but like you know, you know what I mean. Like it, there was not, there was no NES days or anything. So, right, we're, not, way, we're like, not talking about Contra here or something like that. But still, yeah, Contra, we're talking about we're talking about games that sort of revolutionized where you know how how the the next generation was going to go. I mean, it, it definitely was the step the stepping stone for the mm -hmm. entire Soulsborne series since it was the first one that, from my understanding, it was the first one that was put out there. But yeah, it was also just a great stepping stone, right? It, was, it, put, it mm -hmm. at least was the foundation of it. maybe not everything's going to work out, but hey, we're just going to go balls to the wall right now, and then we'll fix it in next yeah. games, assuming we and, get a shot. And they did. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's that's the other part I was going to say too. Like it, it's crazy. Like if you play Dark Souls and then go back to play Demon Souls, you would be amazed. Like how many things are just exactly the same. Like it was basically like the same game with just a different feel maybe different animations and stuff and very few like 
tweaks to like the world and stuff like the only like major thing i would say that's very different about uh dark souls is um the world's interconnected um so you can you don't ever have to like warp anywhere for the first like half of the game um so yeah it's crazy because like you're saying like you know like how many things they experimented with or whatever and like but most of them worked out. Like they, they're still a part of the series until this day, pretty much, even up to like Sekiro. Yeah, yeah. So. And also, I'm glad that they did not implement permadeath in that game, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Carl shout out here. That would have been oh, maybe in the remake they have a permadeath. <laughs> yeah, if they have like its its own sort of difficulty, that's that's fine. You know, like hey, you beat the game once, now go into I... go into permadeath mode or something like that. That would be fun. But I kind of, I kind of doubt it. It would also be. They I mean, either go all in or, or not at all because, like, yeah. FromSoft is not a, a company that sets difficulties in the main menu. They right. they integrate the difficulty modifiers into the game. So there's like summoning. There's like you know different weapons. Some are very good. You know, that kind of thing. A little bit more like immersive. Um, uh, but yeah, as far as like the remake, though, I haven't even answered the question. Um, I I definitely think that. Okay, so like Demon Souls, PlayStation 3 exclusive, very old game. Um, you know, no PC port. Uh, there isn't a media light now, so some people have been getting into that, but it's still like, you know, not, not quite the same. Um, so a lot of people haven't played it. Uh, there's some people who want to, maybe you can't afford it. Some people just are like, ah, this is just Dark Souls beta. It's not, I don't need to play it. <laughs> uh, I, I hate those people, by the way. Personal, personal offense to that. <laughs> no, um, called the f out <laughs> yeah um uh which is ridiculous to me imagine liking souls games and not want to play more souls <laughs> <laughs> how dare you anyway do it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway so yeah so playstation 5 i imagine a lot of people would be more into getting that uh now that the soul series has taken off instead of it being like a you know cold classic kind of game right um so yeah, I it will definitely be like I'll finally get that spotlight. Um, as far as how like play and be received, I mean I can't say for sure until it comes out. Um, but I can tell from the trailers that like the atmosphere is probably, and environment is going to be very different for the most part. Um, in some cases, maybe in ways I'm not too like like what, how do you say it? fond of I guess. Because um, hmm. like for example, like in the first level, Baltaria. People have noted that, like, that uh, a lot of, like, the banners and castles of the, like, place are more, like, gothic now as opposed to, like, I don't know, medieval, I think. Uh, I and see. that alone is a big, like, change if you want to go, like, really in-depth into the uh, aesthetic. Um, I'm not going to be that nitpicky. Like, uh, like my, my big tale is going to be Tower Latra, that level I love for immersion and atmosphere. But um, for me personally, though, like, I'm not... I'm not one of those that's like, oh my god, they ruined this fucking game. How, how, how dare? Like, I don't like. I can just play the original. I'm not that salty about things like that. Like, I'm I'm Good. fine with people experimenting. Good. Yeah, there are a like, lot of people a... just just throwing it out there from the Resident Evil community that played Resident Evil Three Remake, which is a lot of people will say is a complete bastardization of of the original, and it, it kind of is. But there are people that like hardcore speedrunners of the game, people that have made their entire lives off of the Capcom, right? Mm -hmm. They they played the game for like two hours and then refunded it on Steam. Like, oh, mm. Jesus, calm mm. down. Like, just be okay two for hours? Like two seconds. I would say the first two hours are actually some of the best parts of the game, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. My. I mean, I, I, I don't disagree that Resi 3 is a little bit disappointment. Uh, but I wouldn't say to the original. I'll say more so to like the Resident Two remake. Yeah, you know, it's um, a it's a completely new style of game, and it's you know, it's, yeah, yeah people, people, But that that just brings to the point that you know there are people that will think that about Demon Souls, and they'll they'll think that about the Absolutely. remake, and they're like, no, this is shit. This is not yeah. the original game, or like a copy and paste and upgraded from the original game. I hate it. Yeah. I'm not playing it. You can't make me play it. Like, there's yeah, gonna be there's people already... like that. There's already people like that I've seen, like, oh, I and know. I get it. Like, I'm not like, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm also critical like that. Like, I can be, but I'm also not gonna get salty over it. Like, I, like I said, like I can still play the original. Like, I know that's not an option everyone has. Like, there's a reason why some people haven't played it. But um, right. On a personal level, like, if I really don't like it, I'll probably play the original like back. But like, either way though, even if I don't like the game itself, 
BVP. <laughs> I, can, I can invade again. Dude, I haven't invaded since like 2019. <laughs> I want to invade some nerds, man. Get that. that and I, I want to be the section. boss. Yeah, so. I don't know. That, that's it. Like, yeah, but like, you're right. Like, Resident Evil, Final Fantasy 7, people are, some people are salty about the remake and all the, th- and the things. And, you know, everyone has their own opinion. That's fair. But personally, I'm just like, oh, I just play the original. Yeah, people Hardly. also have wrong opinions, and that's fine too. <laughs> well, the people people have the. Uh, it's honestly kind of just like an, a negative or pessimistic outlook on mm-hmm. things too. So I mean, if you start something with a uh, a, a bad outlook, it's not going to be better as you know it goes. And on, there's so. also a lot of bandwagon, like like people are just kind of like. I feel like a lot of people like attach to a sentiment and just kind of go with it sometimes and not really like think for themselves or like you know do their own research i feel that happens especially like in the soul series i feel that happens a fair bit i i get that too yeah i can see what you mean by that yep 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 yeah that should be good i mean i'm excited i don't know how excited you are to get a playstation 5 in in general but um i've been a playstation boy my whole life so i'm i'm ready Uh, other than playing on pc which obviously that's kind of my go-to now but Playing on PlayStation is is the OG for me, and I will. Now that they've said that it's not going to be fully backwards compatible, I'm not going to get it on launch. But you know, I'm a Resi boy, and they're coming out with mm-hmm. Resident Evil Eight, so you you know yeah. I'll be there. How excited are you for uh, its release? Um. Well, my story is that I'm more of a Nintendo boy. Like I, my first console was this N64. Um, it's a great console. And we were Nintendo, yeah, uh, Nintendo fans until like, well, I mean, we still are, but we didn't get another console at the end until like Xbox 360. And it was really my brothers. Like, I personally didn't get another console that wasn't Nintendo until PS3. Oh, once okay. I got my first uh, summer internship. And I think I got like Metal Gear Solid 4 with it, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, and Echo. Uh, uh, let me see my shelf. Like that. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, I got a few games. Like Metal Gear is a big one. Like I, I, I did play some of the uh, Metal Gear games in Xbox 360 because they had a collection, but a lot of them were, um, you know, PlayStation. Yeah, Shadow of the Colossus. Um, that's an OG right there. Yeah. Um. So I mean, but since then, I have very much been a PlayStation slash Nintendo guy. Um. But for PlayStation Five. Well, I I mean, the games I'm looking forward to are Demon's Souls, obviously, Horizon Forbidden West, oh, yeah. and Resi 8, but I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn yet. Like, I know I love it, oh. so that's what I'm saying I'm excited <laughs> for it. Like, it's, it seems like right up my alley. Yeah. And I still haven't gone to Resi 7. I'm, like, I'm actually playing two of the Resi games right now. Uh, I'm up to uh, three. What? Yeah, I still don't play four. It's actually the next one. <laughs> wait pause wait pause you never played resident <laughs> evil 4 no nope. i guess with not having a gaming system from 64 to ps3 that would make sense but bro that is like the og of og oh. that, that like that game like changed oh the... no 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 i i i, ha- I had a, a gamecube and a wii and a wii oh okay. <laughs> i have no excuse then. never i have no excuse i have no excuse that's yeah. just like I just never got to the series until I got started streaming. I actually even streamed all my experiences and highlighted them and everything. So. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So I mean, after I played Resi One and I loved the heck out of it, it's actually my favorite game now. Was it? Did you play the? the uh... Did you play the remake or the? Yeah, the remake. Uh, the, remake. the only the only original I've played for like the you know original original was Resi Three Nemesis. Oh, okay. Before the remake got announced, so I played both. Um. Yeah, I mean, hence me having a Joe. You know, Resi 1 is one of my favorite games ever now. <laughs> so after that, I was like, okay, I'll get through all the games eventually. Yes, yeah, so use your Prime um, Gaming sub on Birdo so you can get this sick-ass uh, Jill, Jill emote. Yep. Yeah, um, That's the goods right yeah, there. Hey, Carl's so, got it too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so PS5, um, because I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn or Resi 7, I don't imagine I'll play them before it's out. Well, I mean, I don't know. They said holiday 2020, but there's not even a price out. Like, I don't know. That's not going to happen. I, yeah, that's not going to happen, is it? So the only thing that will make me get it on release is Demon's Souls. If that doesn't come out, I'm going to wait until it does to buy a PlayStation 5. Yeah. Most that's likely. A good, that's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. Like, if Resident Evil 8 isn't on launch, then I probably won't get it. 
mm-hmm. like until it comes out at least. But yeah, it's just I'm, like I said, I'm a I'm a Sony boy at heart. I've always had. Like, I remember getting my PlayStation One for the very first time, and when I was like five years old, it came out, uh, or at least that's when we got it. I should say, and yeah, that's just, that's how my little tater gaming started. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, but yeah, no, it's it, it's it's always been. I, I was really, really, really pushing that they'd go fully backwards compatible, but we're not that lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that that would be like honestly, like why not? <laughs> like you know how much like Nintendo like, got a lot of praise for having backwards compatible with like at least the previous uh, generation a lot, which I guess they are doing for that this one for PS4. But I don't know, like you could play like. Wait, oh no no maybe not i was thinking maybe we can do more than one generation prior but maybe not yeah. but they could they're all discs at least i don't know like with n64 we couldn't do it because it's a cartridge right you can do it Wii, <laughs> obviously. but this this n64 cartridge won't fit in my switch what's the problem here <laughs> it's because why isn't that playing they're completely different size you think licensing is a big hold up i i was always told it was the technology because it's like from what I understand, and it's not much, and this is just something that has been told to me. I have not done any research on my own. But from what I understand is that you would need two separate motherboards within a PlayStation 5 to run PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. And then PlayStation 3 on that same motherboard. And then PlayStation 4 and 5 would have to run on their own separate motherboard. So you'd basically be having a console that has two separate computers within it. And they have to run separate yeah that that's what i've heard before but i mean yeah i'm not saying but i haven't really looked into it yeah which would then increase the price of it by mm-hmm. 200 bucks <laughs> honestly that might be worth it <laughs> to I, me. I would do it if it was 900 dollars yeah. and it could play any playstation Dude. game i've ever had yeah i would do it but yeah i don't i don't own a two or one and i mean i don't own games i guess so maybe that's not worth it actually but <laughs> i don't know maybe i can get them in digitally or something that'd be great that's the thing. Maybe they're going to pull that and they're just going to pull out, you know, because I, I know that you can put, um, if you have a PlayStation 3, there are, that particular PlayStation Store can purchase games that a PlayStation 4 PlayStation Store can't, I believe. Mm. Like, for example, um, you can get Code Veronica on, Resident Evil Code Veronica on PlayStation 3. Now. What? You can? Pretty sure. I'm pre- that's how what the speedrunners do it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I thought it was like on the Dreamcast. <laughs> That's why I haven't played it. Maybe I should get into that then. Well, it's on the Dreamcast and it's on the PS2. But I think if you're if you use the PlayStation Three PlayStation Store, you can get like a digital copy of it, obviously. But then you can also get it. It's like a small remaster, I believe, because I think that's how the speedrunners use it. And then you know, mm. they, so it's uh, it's. Just... But you can't get it on the PlayStation Four their playstation yeah. store so it's yep. kind of weird so maybe they'll end up doing stuff like that on the playstation 5 they'll just open up everything you're like hey you can download whatever game you want that's on the store mm. re- regardless of which one it's on right on here which i would buy some yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah I, would uh, I was just gonna do a meme where um i turned on my ps3 and i hope you would hear in the mic <laughs> but it's not <laughs> I literally was gonna check after the stream after the podcast <laughs> oh that that would have been dope that would have been dope Yes, a computer within a computer spins the top. True. That's an Inception joke. People didn't know. Mm. All right. Well, we're sitting about an hour here, and that's kind of where we're wanting to go, right? So we'll start uh, wrapping some things up here. So um, first and foremost, uh, do you want to plug anything that you have? Um, You know, your stream, Twitter, anything. What do you got? What do you got? Um, well, my main thing is definitely my Twitch. Like, that's kind of where I've been, uh, you know, just doing my thing. That's, that's what, that's what I do. Um, I have recently, as of like last week, started like kind of regularly uploading to YouTube, like, um, tutorials for Demon Souls. Cause I, I felt like that was a little bit lacking in some aspects, but I just like to do like everything, like everything I felt like could be covered that would be helpful to people. Uh, I started I'm making a video for so yeah, like that's something's happening. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not that like, I don't, I don't personally YouTube to that much, but like that's something that's happening. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
for plugging i guess that's it like i don't know you are on, you are on twitter too don't don't sell yourself short yeah but what's your twitter yeah handle? sure same thing Bert, berto please at berto please which is funny you just had a not just i probably say just but you just had a a, a, a small rebrand where you're going from one name to berto please and i just want to throw that out there that i love the new one right hey i happened. didn't i didn't say I the other up. name i didn't say the other name <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just I you uh, I'll be I, I'll just be blatantly honest with you. It's it takes a lot to just completely change your entire name, right? Your entire um what people see you as. And it's honestly it's brave in my opinion. So you did I I think it worked out for you great. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm like I I don't think I got anyone. Oh, besides the memers, because some people like like how mule my previous name was right. which i mean this one is pretty good too like there's a reason why i picked berto please that is often uh, you know spotted out phrase <laughs> because i'm such a weirdo sometimes um yeah but uh yeah i don't i don't i have zero regrets i honestly like didn't like that uh, last season too much like i just kept it yeah exactly so yeah no from, like years ago great that it worked out and yeah Pr prince noctis hello buddy how you doing Hello. Yes, exposing Birdo. I got you, Lol XD. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Prince is, is an IR friend, so he actually could. <laughs> Exposed. Get him. Get him. All right. Sounds good. Well, yeah. No, I appreciate you being on the podcast here. I agree. I appreciate you uh, taking some time, having some in-depth conversations of your your successful GDQ run. Uh, I don't think I had mentioned this yet, but I know that uh, I don't know exactly how his name is pronounced, but is it Brian Otto on Twitter? Uh, recently put together his like top twenty runs from GDQ and oh you guys are on that list so that's also yeah, great I I think Ash sent me that uh, I wasn't sure who he was or what Zero is but yeah I saw that and I dude like honestly all the feed like I haven't heard a single bad thing about the run like all the feed has been so good like I'm super happy with the run and how everything came out yeah like I, it's gonna be forever like one of my top you know existence moments <laughs> yeah exactly we remember like, all all where it started right there once Berto yeah. his partner and yeah. is a big famous speed running mastermind yeah so it all started that, with the like, gdq run there was so much support too like from communities like my community ashes um people i know from like twitch and stuff uh some people i don't know too well like but know who i am or you know yeah like stop by even some of my friends because i did like shout out on a few like my my you know uh, what do you call it a uh, personal life socials so i was like hey i'm running and some people like watch udq so they're yeah. excited about that so dude it was so overwhelming like all the support it was a crazy it was crazy yeah well it was well deserved that's that's 100 percent sure i'm 100 I'm percent sure on that it was 100 percent well deserved so i posted the video earlier of birdo's run if you'd like to watch it um on the gdq website make sure you watch it uh, at least a hundred thousand times we're trying to get that up to mm -hmm. as high as we possibly can. So keep going with there. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, anything else you'd like to add any final thoughts, uh, before we get it all closed out here? Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll have a fun of the podcast. I'm actually a little sad. It's already over. Cause like, I think, <laughs> I think GQ took up too much. <laughs> like I was down to talk to about some random miscellaneous things, but here we are. Hey, um, that's, that's totally fine. Now all this whole, the whole episodes are based on who the guest is. So, yeah, I was, I was glad we were able to talk some pretty in-depth stuff about that. So yeah, um, only thing I'd add is like thank you to Ash too, since she like dude she, it, it's so hard. like actually doing a GDQ run like compared to decent speedies is like having to like have to worry about like my performance and also commentating like it might have been too much for me. So she definitely yeah. like lightened the load a lot. Uh, she took over a lot of like the heavy explanation things. So and and she did a great like. It's funny. Uh, one little last thing that I didn't mention. Um, some people, I think she saw that in in the chat whenever we watched it back, like afterwards. Like she's someone's like. I, at that first, I thought she was reading off a script, but now I don't think so. <laughs> uh, she she actually might have kind of. <laughs> um, not quite. Like she wrote out her own script. I explained the, the skips to her. Yeah. She and she like you know she understands the fundamentals. It's not like she has to read it, but she wrote her own her own script just to like have a reference. Sometimes she would deviate from it. But yeah, she's she's so natural that like even that didn't probably appear like it was scripted, quote unquote. Even though I don't really call it a script. Um, yeah, no, I got so you. yeah. So shout out to her just for 
for being a fantastic commentator, um, a good friend to me as well. Just I don't know, she's yeah. she's been great. And we did also shout her in the chat here, so make sure you follow her on Twitch. She yeah. recently just got partnered on Twitch, so yeah, she did. She's huge, a she's huge a, congrats she's to her. She's a she's a par- cowboy partner. She's a, a yeehaw cowboy partner. Yeehaw. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, well, yeah, once again, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute you here in uh, Zencaster, but what? Uh, wh- I want to watch that clip with you afterwards, so don't so don't go anywhere. Uh, right. Let me go ahead and close it out here. Uh, you guys know me. I'm Taterboy09, right? So uh, we, I, I, I hadn't mentioned this. I was going to bring this up towards the beginning of the show, but I wanted to jump in and everything. Do you guys see the shirt I'm wearing? Can't really see it very well, right? This is a Tater Talks merchandise shirt. As of earlier today, we are officially have a merch website. So make sure you go over there, take a look around. It's still very new. So let me know if there's something that you want to be added to it. On top of that, here in the Twitch chat, I'm going to be running this until next. I'm going to be running this until Saturday. We have a merch giveaway raffle. For 30% off on your first order. So you have to use 500 channel points for it, which is basically like you're following the channel, right? So go ahead and throw those in there if you want to be a part of that. We will announce that on Saturday, probably. Yeah, that's when we'll announce it. So use those channel points, get in there. I'm going to type exclamation podcast into the chat here. That'll give you all the social links for the podcast. Make sure you follow it anywhere. Your favorite podcast website at tater talks the pot at tater talks pod on twitter and then of course on the big one the youtube channel we're really trying to get that one up to a hundred uh follows so or a hundred subs make sure you get that once again thank you guys for hanging out tonight we had a lot of support here in the chat so i appreciate everybody coming out hanging out um i hope you guys enjoyed it when you were uh, watching it on youtube or listening to it wherever it may be uh and this is going to be your boy tater Signing off, reminding you that a minute spent in this chat is a wasted minute. So let's make it a damn good time. And I hope you had a damn good time today.